I know. I think they're just like, <laughs> no, bring it down a little bit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. It's okay. Yep. Not away, just down. Down. Is this okay? <laughs> Is this bad? No, it's not bad. I'm such yeah, a fidgeter. I mean, you think it's a control thing? I don't know. I just like move around a lot when I'm doing this. I want you to be comfortable. So if you need to pull it away or whatever, just I'm good. You know, be mindful of it. I'm good. You know, you're a pro. So, I mean, I think you, I'd give you more freedom than most people. Everyone should know Paul Caroli of uh, the Changing Denver podcast, of the Denver Pizza podcast, probably most famously. <laughs> My biggest uh, credits. I think so. I mean, that that uh, <laughs> series you did on uh, Rascal Flats, uh-huh. uh, the Rocky Flats, I mean. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we have fun here. <laughs> uh, it was great. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Dude, tell them about the half-life of a nuclear bomb. I'd love to go in detail about the half-life of a nuclear bomb. I don't remember any of that crap wow, anymore. Wow, GG's. Oh I don't crap. remember any of it. This, this was like your, you were Dan Carlin for me of Denver history. You put it together in a story that was great. Go, just summarize for the people what the story of the Rocky Flats was. Wow. Um, this was a few years ago, so I, it's not going to be as tight as it once was, but it was... Uh, Elevator pitch. You don't have to get do that sure, episode. Sure. No, I, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. It was like... Um, so Rocky Flats was a nuclear weapons manufacturing plant just outside of Denver that operated for about 50 years and was notoriously, you know, dirty, poorly run. They had constantly, like, problems. There were two major fires. Um, One where, mop bucket, huge building, <laughs> and you don't want to you, you don't want to know what's in that mop bucket. Yeah, but it was it was Nuclear just clear waste, gnarly shit, you know. And there were fires, and like there, the people in the community got increasingly worried about what was coming out of there, and uh, and then eventually it got shut down. FBI raided it. It was the only time um, one the FBI has ever raided another government agency. And so I did this series about when they were reopening this site as a wildlife refuge. I was going to say, because it's a park now. Yes. You can ride a, your bike around. And I've gone. I've gone on hikes there, and it's like a nice spot. It's not a lot of shade, you know, not good in the summer to go for a hike there. But uh, One of the big things I remember you wanting to do back then was to move eliches there. <laughs> <laughs> well, because one that of the things like you do is like, you know, you pave over it with concrete, you know, and that yeah. you need big slabs of concrete to run those rides. It would to run I mean, the twister. Yeah, I I forgot that I had said the that, but it still eraser. makes sense. Twister yeah. Twister Four. Wow, they're on the fourth iteration. It's broken four times already. <laughs> I guess that is why they do that. <laughs> yeah, we rode Twister. Uh, they recently they reopened it last summer as Twister Three. I think that is a good ass coaster. When's the last time you went to Eulages? Last year we got passes, Megan and I. All oh, right, yeah. All the perks of being a journalist in Colorado. <laughs> I mean. I mean, you've gotten so many perks. You've been to Casa Bonita so many times. Uh, I've been to Casa Bonita one time since yeah. it opened. Yeah, we all know. Not like my why not like Brie. won the uh, ice cream challenge paid off. God, you're they're great, I, but not <laughs> better than Little Man. I like that you won't let that go. Well, you know, I think uh, I was robbed. Little Man was robbed, and everybody should be up in arms about this. We'll revisit it someday. Yeah. When's the last time you were at Elish's? I think I was in high school, maybe. Really? Oh, yeah. Are you not a roller coaster guy? No. Interesting. No. I was too scared as a kid. Uh, I remember one summer, I went. we went to California or something, and my family made fun of me enough that I did it, but I hated the whole time. Every time, I was just like, this the whole time. Oh, yeah? Didn't enjoy it. Don't want, want to force myself to do it. Why do mm. it? And like now, with the vertigo thing I have, I'm just constantly scared of being in oh, high yeah. situations where I don't know. What's going to trigger it? Yeah. That's a fucked up thing they don't tell you with vertigo. It's like they have no idea why it really comes on. <laughs> There's like, ah, it happens. Mm. We don't know how long it's going to last or when it could come back. So, I'm so just scary. Yeah, they're like, maybe stay more hydrated, which I do drink two Nalgene bottles at least a day of water with a hydration pack in one of them, a liquid IV. Good for sugar you. Free. Yeah, I've been doing that every day for the past two years now. Is it feeling good? Sometimes I mean I pee a lot. I pee yeah. quite a bit. But one of the, <laughs> what I was getting at with the Rascal Flats uh, podcast, yeah, yeah, the Rascal Flats, yeah, Rascal well, you're Flats. Talk, yeah, you're talking about the half life of radiation, yeah, of like nuclear waste, yeah. And people are like, oh, you can't go to that place because you walk around the park, you're gonna get, you're gonna come out with like nuclear poisoning. Yeah, some people say that. Uh, yeah, well, but like you were talking to a scientist and he was saying that the half life it won't break down. The half-life means like the a plutonium. Plutonium won't start breaking down for like 
a thousand years. Something like, I think it's so like, like you don't have to worry 20, about twenty thousand something. Th- yeah, so you, you're fine. Maybe I mean the, the, those waste. people say that. Those people say that. The, the, the experts. Those people. I wouldn't call them experts. I would say there's a group of activists who have been very aggressive in trying to block anything related to the redevelopment of Rocky Flats or really anything Rocky Flats related for the last twenty years, um, because they ha- were, were very successful in in advocating and organizing around shutting the plant down. Right. 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 30 some years ago. Yeah, they ago. just made like buttons that went to nuclear bombs. Like it wasn't even like, weren't even like assembling the whole bomb there. It was just like a part of it. That's correct. But yeah, it was crazy. the Im- most important part. Plutonium buttons, which specifically means like, like a, like a, He's like a the 303 dome of like a, the listeners. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the, the, the plutonium was like processed at Hanford in Washington. That was another big plant where the the nuclear you know all this these bombs were assembled so they nuclear. they processed the the plutonium there but then they sent it to rocky flats where it was um shaped into these buttons which were the actual like some people call them triggers but like when you when you did the the reaction when you set off the reaction that was the that was the key piece the fissile material well yeah so there are people that are protesting and didn't want them to open that place mm-hmm. to the public because they're like everyone's gonna get radiation poisoning mm-hmm. but the expert I remember you talking to on the podcast was saying that the material's not even going to start breaking down for 20,000 years. So, yeah, you're fine. Yeah. Do you feel any effects growing a third arm or anything right now? From going to uh, the park? I'm good. No third nipples you want to no. share? I mean, I'm fucked up in a lot of ways, but I don't think it's plutonium related. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? It could be. Uh, Does plutonium cause anxiety? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure a lot of people would say yes. Then maybe. <laughs> well, you know, yeah, probably best known for your work on CityCast Denver. Paul Caroli in the house. So glad to be uh, back here. The dark lord of podcasting. Shout the out. Denver podcasting <laughs> is that's what we call him. <laughs> Shout out to the Brain Trust. Hey, there you go. Thank you. Appreciate it. Always glad to be back. It's fun doing this with you. I'm, I, I just, I think this is a great show and I, I'm honored that you invited me back to do it. Oh, well, I appreciate that. You know, you probably, you know, we're a lot looser here than the uh, stiffs over at the newsroom, I'm sure, you know. A little bit. Uh, Kyle Clark, probably not joking around about plutonium. No. You know. <laughs> a little bit. He's been on a couple of times. So I think, uh, you know, him pretty well. Yeah, well, I don't know if I know him well, but I know him a little bit now, and I, I enjoy talking to him. That's for sure. Yeah, is he a cool guy? Is interesting he kind of a dude. Dick? No, no, he's not a dick. Is he at like, all. don't look at me in the eyes. Is he like getting to be that level? Here's the thing about Kyle Clark is that he has integrity, and that sometimes that means it's a little bit, it's a little bit uncomfortable because like he's he's Kyle Clark in every room that he's in. You know, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, he's like, uh, he doesn't like shape himself or like change who he is depending on the audience. He's just, he is the guy because that's you how you have to do the job that he does. Yeah. So you wouldn't say he's putting it on. He's always being camera ready guy. Yeah, I would say so. I would say so. I think he's like that I at think dinner. He, he is Kyle <laughs> Your time's Clark. Up. He's like talking to his daughter. Your time's up. <laughs> Other daughter, how was your day today? Like you didn't answer the question, daughter. <laughs> yeah. How was your day? You time's didn't up. answer the question. <laughs> yeah. He is good as hell moderating those debates, though. Did you watch any of that? No, I, I mean, just the clips I saw oh, uh, yeah. or heard on CityCast. So. Or Jimmy, did you see the Kimmel segment? No, I heard it on CityCast. Good. I heard Jimmy good. Kimmel. T- that's where I get hell my news. Yeah. And I suggest you do too. Only CityCast Denver. Yeah, so uh yeah, I had some I have some interesting things about this Lauren Bobert uh side project you've been doing, special interest pod. Mm-hmm. I thought uh, you might want to talk about what it. I got from it is you love Lauren Bobert. You're such a mark. Oh god. For her. <laughs> I mean, <sighs> um listening to last episode last yesterday's episode, you said, and I quote, yeah. she was like a Greek god coming down from Mount Olympus to be amongst us mortals. Yeah. You What's don't your think question? That's a lo- I mean, that's... What's your question? <laughs> what did she do to you to make you so <laughs> enamored? I'm not enamored. I'm not enamored. I can recognize that she is a person of great charisma okay. and great talent and intelligence. And I can also see that she is treated 
with a a lot of disrespect by liberals who hate her ideas, you know, and she has strong ideas, very, uh, some people would say extreme ideas. She has said a lot of vile things. She said a lot of offensive things, repugnant things. Yeah. But well, my job is not to- As a journalist. As a journalist, my job is not to judge her. My job is to try to understand her and un even more important than that, understand why so many people love her because that's a fact. And that's what our project is about, is about trying to understand why, despite everything that she has done that is so offensive to so many liberals that other people, our neighbors here in Colorado, love her. And uh, so the idea with the, the podcast is, is it's exploring why people love her? Well, it's kind of like just figuring out what the deal is with her. She's a, she's kind of a confusing person to think about, you know? There's so much that she does. There's so many, you know, people call it antics. What is her title? Like, what does she do in the government? She's a congressperson. She's and what a, does a congressperson do? Well, in the House of Representatives, their main task and is... what is that? <laughs> they have the power of the purse. So every year, Money. the House of Rep exactly the House of Representatives passes two big bills. Okay, there's an authorization bill and an appropriation bill, the, and th those are the ways cultural that, appropriation bill. No money dollars. Okay. They appropriate money, and that's culture. how the, that's how the government is funded. Okay, Congress decides which projects, programs, you know, who to hire, who to fire. You know, they they decide what gets funded and what doesn't. That's the main power she wields is she's one of 435 members of the House of Representatives that votes on those two big bills every year. So there's almost 500 people in this ha House of Rep or Congress people and we're everyone's focused on this one person. So I she's mean, standing here in amongst Colorado. 500. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm just saying yeah, she's a a big pick I mean like people are she's made a big impact. Is that all I'm saying? 100% Hundred percent. She's had a big impact be way beyond the actual day to day work of Congress. In fact, that never seemed to be her focus when she ran for Congress. And we have this in the series. She didn't seem to understand how Congress worked because for her, it seems being being a member of Congress is more like just a platform for being like a an influential, politically minded celebrity. You know, okay, I, yeah, I think yeah. that's pretty easy to understand for people because you just you see her doing crazy things or saying crazy things, you know, interrupting the State of the Union. And you think, OK, wow, you know, that's that's that. She, and she said like sure 13 a, deaths or something or 13 bodies, 13 like, bodies, which was 13 people died in Iran. 13 people died in the American military's withdrawal from Afghanistan, uh -huh. which the President Biden ordered a few years ago. And and Boebert apparently was Thanks, unhappy Biden. about <laughs> I mean, I think we should give him some credit too for some things he's done. Yeah, I think a lot of people really like that he actually that he pulled ended the military. The war. Yeah, I do think it's not <laughs> a big deal because people are like, "War's over." Before World War II, everyone got a parade. I didn't see a parade when that war ended. No, I mean, well, although I yeah. did like saying, "War's over, guy. We're good." <laughs> I said that for like a day. No one really cared. No, I don't think so. Although I thought it was nice. Yeah, I, I think a lot. Do of you people feel felt a big difference way. from being in a wartime America and non-wartime America? I don't even, I couldn't even tell you if we're not in a wartime anymore. Maybe it's not a, like a I quote mean, unquote right, official yeah, I guess war. With the Ukraine stuff going on and the yeah. Israel Palestine stuff. Yeah. I mean, we're paying our, our money, our tax dollars are going towards these wars. Sure. Sure. So are, are, are American citizens being shot and killed right now? I don't, I don't think so, but are we in, are we fighting wars? Yeah. I think we're so. definitely funding them. I think. <laughs> that was funny what do you think about the wars what do you think I about mean, the forever it's war it's unfortunate i mean what's unfortunate specifically to you which aspect i mean that people are dying i mean i guess yeah that's, i just want to get that out there i don't support war paul glad to know that I mean, yeah, I mean, I can be a little blase about it or whatever, but I mean, yeah, because I mean, it's been going on forever, so it doesn't seem like that big of a deal. You know, I mean, like, I yeah. can, I want to make fun of it. So, I mean, I guess that's fucked up, I guess, in that sense that I'm not like. It's a. Uh, I don't know. It We've feels so, so separate from our experience. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yes. I've been so desensitized by it. I can't. I can't uh, think about it in a way that's like, I mean, it just doesn't seem to be affecting me. I don't know. 
Because, yeah. I mean, even if we didn't, we weren't funding these uh, proxy wars, I don't know if that money would be coming towards us anyway. You know, like with mm-hmm. that, I mean, we still probably wouldn't have better roads, have uh, sidewalks you didn't have to pay for yourself. I know that's something you feel passionate about. Mm-hmm. Paul lives on the corner of a, of a street, so he'd have to pay for two strips of sidewalk if that yeah. bill got passed. Yeah, listen to Sadie Cast people. Yeah, that's a fun thing that comes up. <laughs> Whenever we talk about sidewalks, I, I, Thank you for talking about where I live. Um, the but corner. No, I mean, I didn't say what corner. Which I appreciate. That'll be on the Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> Give me five bucks and I'll tell you where Paul lives. <laughs> should I raise no, it? You think you more for that? Yeah, you should raise it. Um, but our, $25 our, a month. Jeez Louise. Our, we do have listeners writing in sometimes to talk about like, oh, he, he lives in this big house and he doesn't, he doesn't you? care yeah oh okay and it's like all right oh, because you're saying you would pay have to pay more if that bill because got we're on the corner we have yeah the yeah. two sidewalks and people are they're imply they think are inferring that you live in a mansion it must be a ginormous house yeah, right, yeah. which is i mean whatever <laughs> it's modest uh it's a house <laughs> it's a house yeah okay i'm just fucking with it. i'm just fucking with you yeah um but yeah proxy war is not good i'm against war okay good uh, what about world war ii you don't want America like to fight it. the Nazis to fight Hitler? I mean, You're obviously, that? I was I was for our boys. I support the troops, but I don't like war. Did you see that it was like the 80th anniversary of D-Day this week? <laughs> I saw some people talking about that, and I was like, that feels like not relevant to my life. Yeah, I mean, if we're so far removed from I mean, that was a century ago, bro. I mean, that was... But people felt something about it, you know? Back in the day, yeah. I was seeing anyway. I mean, it's like our nine eleven. It's like, yeah, we were we lived through it, you know. Yeah, that just has more of a effect because we had some kind of experience. We experienced it. Yeah, in a way, I experienced it. What was your experience in nine eleven? I remember playing cards with my buddies while the teacher rolled in the TV and we watched news oh, really? coverage of stuff. Yeah. Wow. And I was bringing playing cards to the school at that time. So we played like, you know, hmm. crazy eights or some shit <laughs> on the floor. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, I mean, I remember my dad being like, this is crazy, you know, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I was like, hey, don't hit me more. I was more worried about that than, you know, mm-hmm. stuff going on hmm. in the world at that time. Yeah. Uh, I remember watching Disney Channel original movies that Ooh, night. Which one? I I don't know which one. Xenon. I mean, Xenon Brink? was one of the ones. Brink was the other one that I was gonna Johnny was gonna Tsunami. Shout out. Wouldn't have remembered Alley Cat that. Strike. Wow, how many can you do? Actually, this is <laughs> uh, pretty smart impressive. Smart House, Luck of the Irish. I remember Smart House. Smart House was great. I mean, they had it? the chick from Married with Children in it. Okay. You okay. don't remember her? No, I don't. Yeah. Um, I She's remember amazing. Brink. Brink, Brink Brink was great. Was it the guy in Brink the same guy from Luck of the Irish? No. Okay. Not no. Okay. Xenon Two, the Zequel. Definitely remember Xenon Two, the Zequel. Did they ever make a? <laughs> three, I think they did. A threes Wool. Uh, we were. It was past my time. Yeah. You know. The Cheetah Girls. Definitely the Cheetah Girls. That was a little bit past my time, but I remember they made a movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, they probably made some That's So Raven movies. Probably. Yeah. Anyway, back to... Back to... Uh, back to Bobert. Bobert, yeah. So you, she's this, made a big splash. You're very into her. Um, I'm interested in her. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that so much... I mean, because it does... You were... We've talked off mic about uh, the choice to focus on... Make focus on this... Per, on a single person. You yes. know, because it gets a different focus than city cast ever city cast is about 100%. denver news in denver and this is about one person yeah and it's more of like a what would you even call it? like a uh so not side project it's more than a side project but it's like it's like a, its own like kind of sub it's like a spinoff yeah spinoff that's a good word for it yeah it's a spinoff about this person who's influenced colorado stuff a lot yeah and uh i mean she's the biggest story in colorado right now right now even right now i, th- I thought uh, like after 100%. the beetlejuice stuff it was then that, for sure i mean that captured the nation's attention oh my god yes yeah her getting felt up at at beetlejuice here at the dcpa i did think what kyle clark was saying was interesting about how like being surveilled 
in Mm -hmm. and like her trying to lie about it that's a bigger issue than whether people were actually surveilling you or not or not that was the issue for him i mean this is the next episode that's going to come out on lauren bobert can't lose the spinoff podcast from citycast denver is going to be this like i'm breaking down the whole week of beetlejuice like what it was what she actually went through, what she said and when, and then most importantly, how it affected her voters. And and I have this person who was her former volunteer on her campaign, her first congressional campaign, who loved her. And, and now they don't like her. And now they don't like her. It's because of Beetlejuice. I imagine working with anybody in in politics, you end up not liking them after a while. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, think? it seems to be such a a hard thing to do, you know, and then the people who get into it, their personalities i just wouldn't vibe with yeah i think so too i mean you gotta you gotta really like believe in your own you believe in yourself believe, believe in, your, in ideas. your own shit smell yes you gotta really sniff your own farts and like it you have to both have extreme conviction in your ideas and the willingness to compromise Damn. to be successful and it's i think that's very difficult yeah part of me well i listened to the first episode and the first, and she had some like very the the sound bites were so good. I mean, the one where she goes, she brings like an open carry to some anti gun thing after yes. the shooting yes. at the Aurora Theater, mm-hmm. and this guy was like, "I don't feel comfortable with you here." And she was like, "Don't worry, sir, I got your back." I was like, "God damn it, that was such a good line." That's... That she like fucking just. I mean, it's like she was like a roaster. It was mm-hmm. like a comedian roasting. It was perfect. It just worked. Won yeah. me over. I like her now. See, that's what I'm talking <laughs> I mean, about. It's like, just so some, funny. You just sometimes you just have to like recognize, like, I have to have a good zinger. She's good at this. Yeah, yeah. she's good at this. Well, it, 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 what it reminded me of is just somebody like a comic trying to get a, a sitcom or something. You know, like you're trying to get noticed, mm-hmm. and then hopefully you can, uh, or like get into some kind of reality show that way. So part of me yeah. feels like that's what she's doing. Is like she's trying to spin off into some her own reality show. You yeah. know, it'd be keeping up with Bobert instead of keeping up with the Kardashians eventually. I wouldn't be surprised if she did that, but I think she's pretty passionate about her ideas. Like having sat across from her at her kitchen table. You have spoken to her. Yeah. We, we That's did. something I wanted to get we into. We talked for about an hour and nine minutes. And uh, I, th- I think she really does love politics and care about doing this work. Are you sure it's about politics in general or her involvement in politics? That what do you she mean? talking about? I mean, I could talk about my podcast all day. I want to talk about things I'm doing actively in podcasting and comedy. Yeah. I don't necessarily want to talk about what some other person in Denver's podcasting and comedy is about. Oh, interesting. I, I see the distinction. You're saying like, would she, would she, does she just want to talk about the issues? Like, does she want to or, talk about, I mean, like, she wants to talk about her. She wants to, yeah. I mean, I, I would think that those are hard to, um, two different things, but you got to separate those. Yeah. Well, and just given the position that she has gotten herself elected to, like her, her opinion on the issue is part of the issue because of how our system right, works. Yeah, yeah. Because she's going to have, she's going to vote on stuff, you know, like, like the fact that she consistently and still to this day says that the, the 2020 election was stolen from Donald Trump. Like the fact that she thinks that, like that's, that's something about her, but it's also something that she'll. Did you ask her about that? Yeah, I did. And she said, yes, she 100% thinks it was stolen. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Which is kind of fucked up, actually, when you think about it. Because, like, she was there on January 6th in the building. And the tweets she sent, she sent a tweet that said, uh, the speaker has left the chamber. So, you so think like, she was why like, why did she say that? Hmm. Why would she say that? So people could get it. If she, ex- yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. So it's Nancy Pelosi, by the way. So. Wow. She was she was saying that's a name I've heard that she was the speaker of the House at that time, a Democrat leading Democrat. And so Lauren Boebert was in the chamber of the House of Representatives on January 6th. She saw that there were these, you know, some people would say insurrectionists, rioters. You what know, does she call them? Patriots? Her friends? I don't I don't remember what she said. <laughs> OK, she, but it's interesting what language she did choose. And I would like to I'm now I'm curious what she said, but I totally forget. She said something like, you know, these guys came in. And, um, you know what, you're going to, you'll have to listen yeah, to the I mean, interview. I'm excited to you'll hear You'll have to listen yeah, to the yeah. interview. I, I will be interested in that and definitely tuning in. I subscribed. All right. You got me. I'm a mark. I'm glad. I'm a mark for this stuff. I, I can't get enough of it. Yeah. So you're niching. I mean, it's a spinoff. You're really kind of niching down to one person. Mm-hmm. I mean, have you gotten any like, I mean, she's a super inflammatory person yes. or, uh, 
people feel strongly. I'm, what would you say to somebody who's like, why would you give her a platform or give this person a platform? Great question. Hugely controversial topic. Yeah, I mean, and some would say, why would you give Paul Crowley a platform? Who would say that? Uh, Josh Never Emerson, mind. maybe. No, he would say. <laughs> shout, out, shout out to Joshua. He, he's a, a great yeah, he's guy. He's in a monkey I suit see over his, at Casa his Bonita. show tonight, actually, at Denver Fringe. Oh, okay. He's I'm doing magic. Oh, okay. No, Sorry. Just, Sorry, Joshua. Yeah, just fuck <laughs> um, so, but no, the, your question is why platform? Yeah, what would you why say to people who are like- platform yeah. her? Yeah. Okay. So what does platforming mean? You're giving her uh, your- uh, Giving her voice more of a reach than she would otherwise. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. I understand why people would feel that way. I think this is something that's actually changing in our, in the journalism world the way people feel about this topic. You know, people have different opinions about it. I happen to be a real hardliner where I don't really I agree with the idea of platforming. Like I'm interested in the things that I'm interested in, period. You know, if you want to pay attention to the show, great. I would love that. You know, that helps me and, you know, do more of the journalism that I care about. And that means, you know, focusing on people who I think are interesting. I don't, I don't believe that uh, broadcasting someone's voice is an endorsement of their ideas. I think that, you know, maybe this is controversial, but democracy dies in darkness. I think that shedding light on troubling or problematic or questionable or controversial issues helps people understand the world better. Sure. Yeah, I agree with that. And make their way in it more easily. You know, I think, I think if we were to ignore her, which for some reason, the rest of the news outlets in this city have chosen to do that we would be missing something really important that's happening in our community, in our state, our neighbors, I have an uncle who lives in the district that she's running for right now. I think he's going to vote for her. You know, that's interesting. After, after everything she's done, everything she's said, interrupting Biden at the State of the Union, calling one of the, a fellow member of the House of Representatives a terrorist, the Beetlejuice stuff, you know, that, that one particularly, I, I don't know if that's, you know, that upsetting to me personally, but no, like, yeah, I can I mean, understand why some people would say like, she stands for family values and this is a little bit hypocritical, but like, whatever, that's a personal moment. Sure. Um, I think if we were to ignore it, that would be a, a much, much bigger problem. Wow. It's, uh, Cause I don't see it as people ignoring it. I mean, she's gotten national news. I mean, she's made all, I mean, she's made waves. Like people aren't ignoring her. That's what I, but I no, one's, no one's put else it together name. like this. I, yeah, no, no, no one's done a. Uh, spinoff podcast you should check out wherever you get your podcast. Uh, <laughs> Apple Podcasts. Uh, not YouTube though. You should. Uh... We're on YouTube. All oh, right, right, right. Well, good for you. Yeah, thanks. So am I. I mean, it's not check as, out it's not right as brain. beautiful as the left hand, right brain videos on Thank YouTube. You. But appreciate it, it. It's on there. Um. Well, yeah. No, I totally agree with you. I do think that you know. I mean, if you give these, I mean, if, you know, freedom of. Uh, you know, what's, what's that amendment or whatever you have the freedom to talk. Everyone's got yeah. the freedom to talk. And Here, uh, here's the thing. Here's my real answer. Here's the short answer to the platforming question. Okay. What is my, what is the job of a journalist? It's not to change people's minds. And I'm, this is quoting from an old, the old head of CBS news. It's not to change people's minds. It's to open them. Okay. I'm trying to open people's minds to see that Lauren Boebert can't lose. There are so many people that love her. They love her ideas despite everything she's done. And that's worth trying to understand. That's what the series is about. Yeah, the name is like... <laughs> it's provocative. Yeah, it is provocative. Yeah, that's a good word for it. Yeah, because it seems like... Because it does really seem like you're on her side. You know, I mean, like, you hear the name and you, if you don't like her, you're just like, oh, well, they're obviously pro Bobert. You know, I think so you some have people to dig have a little, had that mistaken you impression. You gotta listen. You know, I mean, you gotta... I do think that people before they criticize should actually listen because they think that they would see that it's not just an endorsement of her. You it's know? not an endorsement at all. It couldn't be further from an endorsement. I'm, I am disappointed that that title has had that effect on people. I did not anticipate that. I feel like anybody just says, Oh, if you talk to this person or even talk about them, then you're endorsing them. I, I mean, know. that's what I'm sure a lot of people, people are think assuming that, that. some yeah. people think that, and it drives me nuts and it makes me so disappointed with the way the world is because I I've told you this, I we've talked about this. You have this 
you have something that is increasingly rare in this world where you're willing to listen to people. You have oh, an open that. mind yeah. <laughs> and not everyone has that. And sometimes, and when some people saw the title, Lauren Boebert can't lose, they think what you're saying, they think, oh, literally we've had, we, you could go to the YouTube page for our trailer and you could see people saying, why would you make this trash about this trash person? And it's like, what are you talking? How do you, how do you come to that conclusion? Like, well, because they're judging a book by its cover, kind of a thing. You know, they're yeah, not I guess listening. So. I guess so. I mean, I that's know. exactly. It bothers me. It I bothers mean, yeah, me. Yeah, it has to be frustrating. Sorry, it's just, just started playing everything. My uh, this is the most recent episode. This is a good one. This is about what she's actually done as a legislator, which, by the way, you know, don't you want to know? Don't you want to know what I she mean, yeah, actually does? You know, passing important. laws and yeah. stuff, what her votes are. Totes. Instead of just like, Oh my God, she did this offensive, horribly, like, oh, immoral thing at a theater. She was groping some guy. Well, yeah, but well, she also wields real power. They were groping each other. <laughs> nice. It was a mutual groping. Oh yeah. They were having fun. It was a, I mean, it's kind of sweet. It seemed like, a, it seemed, like a, <laughs> it seemed like they were getting along. <laughs> that's like, what do you, uh, I don't know. I mean, that's just my own personal opinion and perspective, but like, whatever, whatever yeah, she I mean, wanted to do fine. in the theater, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, sure. Have you been to that theater? Yeah, I saw um, Hamlet. Oh yeah, when I was in college. You yeah, know, we were doing a a scene from Hamlet in our acting class, and they were doing Hamlet at the thing. And, oh, cool. Yeah, so I went and saw him. Did Maybe, you Did you think you were being surveilled? No, no, did not think that. Interesting. But I mean, I think you should assume that you're doing it all the time. You I should? mean that you're being a, uh, surveilled all the time. Yeah. Hmm. Are there cameras in here right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah and that teddy bear that's right next to your face <laughs> is this a camera yeah, yeah. the teddy bear with one big eye in the middle of its forehead <laughs> blinking <laughs> flashing a red yeah, light, that red light yeah that's not a camera is it <laughs> i definitely think that's just a safer bet these days probably i mean with my job i actually just got surveilled at my job so you oh know, really pulled tape of me uh you know hitting the brake too too fast Damn, dude. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of sensors in the bus that I work, you know, where I work. So hmm. if if you hit the brake too fast, if you, you know, they know all they, they know all this shit and they'll be like, oh, you uh, should have been paying attention to those people. You shouldn't have been that close to that car anyway. So you're driving unsafe. Boom. You get a ding. You get hmm. a point off. Hmm. And if you get so many points off, then you have to do retraining and all this stuff. But I mean, I get they got to get their insurance covered somehow, you know, yeah. so. Well, it's also like important that the, pe safe, the people that safe. you're serving are like they have specific requirements and needs like yeah gotta, yeah i understand why it's highly regulated even though that sucks probably yeah was it hard to sell this lauren bobert thing to your your co-workers because i mean it seems like uh brie's got some hard lines on certain things like i would just listen to yeah. the one the, what the uh republican senator who like because there's a whole pride thing that they put out yeah I felt like the whole time she was like, no, say this is bad, dude. Say this is bad. And he do, he was dancing around it like crazy. You, well, yeah. you know who I'm talking about. What was yeah. the Repo His the name is Valdemar Archuleta. Yeah. He's running for Congress to represent Denver. Yeah. And it was uh, interesting to hear I mean, because he was totally being a politician about it. Mm -hmm. And she, I mean, she was basically being like, no, condemn this. Mm -hmm. I mean, and the, I mean. Yeah, even to the point where I was like, all right, Brie, leave me alone. I mean, like, it, but settle down, <laughs> you know, but hmm. sorry, I'm not trying to tell women to settle down. I'm just saying it was, uh, it was, an it was interesting pretty interview. obvious where she, her, her opinions were. Definitely. And uh, that's hard to keep out of journalism. And it's not, it's not like you're on the daily news either. It's a podcast. The yeah. podcast is, the podcast realm is a little different. You're not writing for a newspaper. Exactly. So you are, the things you choose to record are things that are, you know, you're interested in. Yeah. I mean, as usual, you're asking the exact right question. Bree and I have different opinions about this. Like I said earlier, I'm, I'm kind of a hard liner on the platforming question in that I don't agree with the premise of platforming yeah, and that yeah. critique. She does. She has a very strong opinion about a lot of issues and doesn't necessarily want to give people the space the time. to share their ideas yeah. if, if she doesn't agree with them. And we, we have that disagreement and we hash it out on every single individual instance. Yeah, because even you guys allude to it on the podcast that you guys have had to your biggest arguments or like you've had arguments about this oh series. Oh my God, knock down, drag them out it fights. It has to be hard, man. How do you like... That's why, that's what makes the show good though. Like we I mean, fight it out every time and we get to a conclusion that we 
we think matters and we both believe in. How do you do that? <laughs> I guess. I mean, I don't know, man. It seems like such yeah. a hard thing to like keep the business and the personal thing. I mean, you know, your coworkers, yeah. you have very passionate beliefs. I mean, you guys, you know, your coworkers, I don't know how, you know, how deep your friendship is already, but that would be hard for me to work with somebody that I just had an argument, a knock down, drag out argument with. Yeah. That would be hard for me. Well, I mean, you I respect her. Be a professional. I, I guess. respect her. That's sure, what sure. it is. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably a good place to come from. Yeah. That's, that's good. That's good that you do that. That's where it starts and that's yeah, where it yeah. ends. Yeah. Yeah. There's a baseline of, of really deep respect. I guess you really cut down to it. Yeah. Cause I guess the people that I, I'm thinking about that I have worked with or didn't like or wouldn't want to get on the podcast are, you know, I don't respect. So there you go. Yeah. So hear that. If you haven't been on the podcast, I don't respect you. <laughs> <laughs> uh no i'm just oh. joking all right you know i don't think about you whatever uh anyway let's get to you uh you were talking about uh road rage recently yeah the road rage thing comes up a lot on the podcast it does um i remember talking to you about zipper merging a long time ago do you about yes Did we? yes this is so and like never not give a me thing any credit for, me. for it i should have i should i should have given you credit for Thank it you. i was like please bring my, my name to kyle clark yeah. You want to get Kyle on the couch? <laughs> I mean, I would love to. I, th I think it would be. You should invite him. I don't think he'd like it. You don't think so? I think he would. Yeah. I think he would crumble. I think With he the likes questions hard I questions. asked you. I think I he think actually he would likes crumble it. under that. No, 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 no. no the no. weight of no, left no, hand, no. right brain. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think he'd enjoy it. He would crumble under this hat. Mm, I don't know. Well, there's your challenge, Kyle. Come on. Let's talk about real stuff. <laughs> That's enough time. You Road rage. Enough. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I, sorry. You didn't answer the I question, would, Kyle. I, would, I asked uh, you what's your favorite donut. I would continuously say that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't answer the question. Who's your favorite coworker? How just can we just talk about him again? Like Kyle he's Clark. so good. He did that. That debate was so good. Like again, didn't watch. I don't you've got, the clips. got. You've got, got to. You've got. Oh, I to. got to watch. You, a, I got to watch a debate. No, I mean you between you can do whatever Congress you want, people. But it I was, can watch Dune two again. How many times have you seen it? Once. Yeah. Not that great. I watched was Dune. It? What? It was great. No. I enjoyed it. I just B haven't minus. gone to the gym because I've been watching movies while I'm on the treadmill. I recently mm. fucked up my foot. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck it was. Dude. I just like woke up foot in pain for limping around for about a week. Wow. Thanks, 35. Uh, <laughs> That's what happens. <laughs> I guess so. Thanks, Biden. Yeah. Yeah. For anyway. Me, yeah. Anyway, so uh, yeah, you guys were talking about zipper merging, which I do think is probably mm -hmm. my biggest pet peeve, one of the biggest pet peeves one of me driving around all day. People don't do that. Explain to me specifically what is zipper merging. Uh, okay, so you got, so let's say there's some construction, you got two way, two lanes mm -hmm. going down. There's some construction up 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 ahead, a mile ahead. So you got the the sign saying, "Hey, merge! Everyone needs to merge into the right lane." Yes. All right. Everybody sees that sign when they can see it like two miles away. Everyone gets into the right lane or yeah. left lane, whatever, merging into, the, merging into the left lane. Everyone gets in the left lane. So there's a line three miles long in the right lane or left lane, uh -huh. whatever lane you're supposed to merge into. And then there's, there's space on and the there's other lane. there's a clear lane on the other side. And it's like people who don't see the sign until it's too late. No one's going to let them in because mm -hmm. they're like, no, fuck you. I, w I got in line like a good boy mm -hmm. and now you can't get in front of me. It's a very wild west you know like <laughs> get off my lawn mentality uh -huh. and uh because but if you zipper merge everybody you know you let one car through one car in and then you're there's enough space how do you not kyle clark told you about this how do you not know about it i just like don't i don't think See, about this, this is stuff. the point i was it's getting at like you're a bad my... driver guilty okay well you didn't say that on the pot i was waiting for you to i'm a bad driver i don't pay <laughs> okay. attention i don't yeah, i don't care about one thing driving. you said is you took so much pride in, in saying i don't get road rage I don't. But it's because you're not there, bro. I'm, <laughs> of course. I'm, I'm sure I'm causing other people's road rage all the time. <laughs> yeah, you oblivious, bro. Maybe. Yeah, you're blissful ignorance. Ignorance is bliss. Here's what I do. And that's you behind the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> I plug in my destination into Google Maps. Even if it's a neighborhood I know, a place I know, I'll plug it into Google Maps. I'll see how long it I takes. I do that too. And I'll say, take me there. And then I follow directions until I'm there. You're not like trying to get maximize your time that there you're getting ways no. taking you through neighborhood no i trust google maps to get me there in the time that they say i it enjoy takes. google maps quite a bit as well we use that as well when i'm in the bus 
So I'm just so used to always having Google Maps on, being able to glance at it. I, I it's like a comfort thing for me too. I do like it. Yeah. Um, old generation, all the old bus drivers, they hate it. They don't even. They're like, when I was training and I had this old school guy there, he's like, he's like, stop looking at your tablet so much. Whoa. And I was like, dude, I'm fucking seeing where the next turn is, you know, or whatever, you know. Yeah. And it tells you, hey, guess what? I don't need to know what side the address is on because Google Maps will tell me. <laughs> if I look at the map, I'll know if it's on the left or the right side of the street and I can oh, come man. accordingly. Because you always have to, you're when I, you're driving the accessory ride bus, you're always supposed to pull up with the passenger side door mm -hmm. facing their door. Mm -hmm. So you have to know, you know, even odds and even addresses that end in odds and evens are like on the east and west sides of the street or north huh. and south of uh, avenues. You know, they're, you know, depending on what direction you are going. I don't know if I said that right. Don't quote me. I probably would fail that question in the test. Okay. But, uh, yeah, you know, they make you learn that for training and then you don't ever fucking apply it anymore because you have Google Maps. Right. Yeah. Right. It's probably the best um, thing the internet has given us. Google Maps? I think, yeah. For sure. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a, that's top five for sure. What else is on that list for you? I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to think. I'd have to think about it. There's a lot of stuff that sucks. Uh, spell check invaluable spell check for me good. as a dum-dum that's not the internet though well you know like what do you mean you could have spell check on on word and not be connected to you Wi can have a map anywhere you can get a map <laughs> no it's different though. it's <laughs> oh, different, is it though. different it updates automatically yeah, it's, it's, when it's I'm your, out there. that's your spelling bias your good speller bias i am a good speller of course you are i'm a great speller <laughs> give me any word right now i'll spell it any word you want acidophilus Acidophilus? I don't know. Yeah. Did you just make that up? I think it's Is like that a, a word. Pill? Well, I'd have to know how to spell it to Google. <laughs> also, I'm watching you do it. Dude, this has like been the bane of my fucking. Yeah, acidophilus. It's a. A S S. Oh, acidophilus. Okay. Acidophilus. Yeah, is I mean, also I can spell it now. I'm looking at it on the screen. Lactobialysis. It's like what a. What is this? like a lactate pill oh i've been thinking about that more lately speaking of getting a old, probiotic my body doesn't handle dairy the way it used to mm. yeah I heard that breaks down everybody's body so you know it's normal yeah been getting really into dq actually i've been in a whole DQ dairy queen? phase yeah nice yeah, yeah grill and chill or just chill just chill i don't go for the grill well okay that's fine yeah. i mean what do you what's your order cake Ice cream cake. cake. I get a whole ice I know. cream cake. <laughs> no, there was, a, there was a whole stretch when I was a kid. <laughs> there was a whole stretch when I was a kid and I would get ice cream cakes from Dairy Queen. They're the best. Really? They're the best, yeah. Just for no occasion? No, well, I mean, I'd get it for my birthday. I mean, yeah. Okay, okay. I was like, you write on like, hey, happy yeah, Friday. You could do whatever. You could do whatever on there. Uh, you right? could. Yeah. Uh, very you should do that later do tonight. That. Yeah. Last time my mom did it was on my 30th birthday. So, Aww. yeah, that was very sweet. That's nice. Yeah, it was nice. I'm going to remember this. I'm going to get Hasn't you a nice Hasn't done it cake. since. Five years. Thanks, Ma. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm, just, um, I'm a chocolate dipped cone guy. Interesting. Yeah. They had a, uh, they've been doing a lot with uh, confetti. They had a confetti dip. Interesting. Which just was like, you know. I tried the orange sprinkles. orange dip once. Did a, a butterscotch not too long ago. Butterscotch is okay. Butterscotch, I mean, uh, it's a classic. The cherry is a classic. NPR is doing a whole thing about sweet treats, like what's your favorite summer treats? Mm -hmm. And they keep saying the uh, the whatever Buster Parfait, Peanut Buster. Peanut Buster Parfait. Ooh. I don't know. I, I like a fucking classic blizzard. I, that's what I go. They have I, a peach cobbler one right now. Fucking killing it, dude. The bits good. in there, the bits of cobbler. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I know you that's do. what you want. I um I used to love the Blizzard, but I I just don't Which like one? the bits anymore. Oreo, it, Oreo was my one or the Reese's that's, Cup. It's all about bits, dude. That's what I want. You gotta I, have good bits. I know you like the bits. I like the it's smooth the bits. ice cream. Just give me the straight soft serve. That's that's what I'm there for. That's <laughs> Sound what's more like about an old it. man. Hey, maybe you know I'll own it. You know that's who I am. I like this. I like the yeah. straight soft serve. Chocolate dip. That's nice, but I what I'm there for. You want is cold the pudding, smooth, soft, <laughs> sweet, probably plain not that much vanilla dairy just... in it. But yeah, plain vanilla. Boom, hell yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. Bring it on, yeah. Do you remember in uh, the Hangover Two when he 
the uh, Ed 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 Helms is getting married mm-hmm. to the Thailand chick, and the dad insults him by saying he's like Cho, which is like this like squishy rice thing they give to elderly people who can't chew or. <laughs> That's basically what you described <laughs> as your favorite thing. <laughs> it's just this white, yep, <laughs> vanilla base. I mean, if it had more vanilla in it, I could maybe get behind it. Best vanilla, maybe like a Briar's vanilla. Yeah, I like natural vanilla. vanilla. But I mean, it's not like the the white or this the vanilla ice cream from Dairy Queen doesn't have doesn't have a strong vanilla flavor. No, it's, it's not vanilla it's really. Just it's sweet. It's, it's a its sweet own cream. Thing. Mm-hmm. Sweet cream. It's its own. Which I'm not against, but also, come on, there's so much better thing. <laughs> Put you, some bits in there, bud. You enjoy your bits. Put some bits in there, What are your bud? bits? What are you come going on. Well, you like the peach cobbler, but what? Peach cobbler before so that, what were you going Oreo, for? Oreo. 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 Oh, ooh, the cheesecake one. Cheesecake, cheesecake bits, hard to beat. I could try that. Yeah. I could they have try have like that. strawberry cheesecake. Mm. What else so did good. I love at Dairy Queen? I like their french fries for a while. Mm. I like the grill and Yeah, chill. never did the grill. Never did the grill. They're I mean, very rare these days. You maybe, don't see them. I mean, you don't see Dairy Queens, period. The one near us closed. Did I tell you that? Quick, Over quick on, time uh, or quick trip, put them out of business? No, it was before that. You but were also, very excited for this quick trip, and I was like, I can't wait for this to bite him in the butt. Has it Has it yet? Bite me in the butt? Yeah. No, it's not you bite me in the butt. You were excited for a quick trip gas station to open up in your neighborhood. Yeah. So gas wars I thought for there your was gonna hybrid be some... car. <laughs> Yeah, I thought it was going to be price wars and I was going to end up paying for really cheap gas and uh, that has not materialized. Yeah, because the neighborhood, there's no one to challenge them, I think. There's there, like... There's a gas desert. Let's call it that. There's gas stations. There's one kitty corner from uh, Quick Trip and there's another one down the block. Stinker. There's also a lot of construction going on in that neighborhood right now. So there's true. just like not a lot. I used to go to that Starbucks all the time. On used Leedsdale? to be a Wedge now it's a Now it's a... Donuts Town. Donuts Town, yeah. Yeah. It's got like all the Winchell shit. They just took, yes. they just took down the Winchell's logo. Yes. It, I was very, I was obsessed with that for a while. I was turned off by it last time because it just smelled like, uh, you know, the cleaning fluid that you use to mop. You know, you put the oh. cap full of uh, lemon, mm-hmm. lemon zest or whatever in there. Mm-hmm. It just, I mean, it was too, it was like a strong bleach lemon smell last time I was in there and it just turned me off. And I'm oh. like, did you fucking coat the, did you mop the floor with only that stuff? You didn't like dilute it with water, guy. Mm. Anyway. It's gross. Yeah, it wasn't wasn't ideal. I talked to the person who owns that um, that spot, and they um, they said they had a really bad experience with Winchell's Corporate. Apparently, Winchell's Corporate is pulling out of this market. Oh, I do love Winchell's though. I know, I love it too. They just made a new one over on Wandsworth. A new Winchell's? I mean, well, they renovated it. They re- it's like, yeah, well, maybe oh, we can go tonight. My info maybe is out of date, party. it we sounds party. like. We should go to that. It's either Wadsworth or, I think it's Sheridan, maybe. It's way down Sheridan, going out towards like 36th. I haven't had one of those apple fritters in a minute. Oh, man, so good. Yeah. Uh, although it's, it's warm outside, so, you know, I've been thinking about the ice cream. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, my brother did work at a Dairy Queen when, I was in, when we were in high school, and I remember getting the uh, uh, chicken, chicken fingers, or, you know. There you go. That's probably the only thing I've had from there. From the grill? Yeah. From the grill side? Yeah. I remember in when I was a kid, we had a grill and chill near us. I had the burger. There was I mean, Dairy Queen? Hot... Yeah. What did <laughs> I say? You keep calling it a grill and chill. Because there's very distinct types of Dairy Queens. There's Dairy Queens that are just the cold oh, stuff, are? which is the popular stuff. Okay. And then there's Dairy Queen grill and chills that also have the hot food. Oh, okay. Interesting. I don't I know, know where there's the a difference. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, please. Yeah, there's a difference. Yeah, there's a, in um, Alamosa, there's a grill and chill that like Megan, when Megan and I were there for um, like a long His weekend, wife. my wife, the, thank you, the Friday night, the grill and chill, the line for the drive through was out onto the street. Slammed. It was the hottest spot in town in Alamosa. <clears throat> there's one in Loveland that gets pretty hopping too. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's the Alamos of, of the northern Colorado area. <laughs> they say that Loveland is the Alamosa <laughs> of the north. Yeah, that's what it says on the Grill and Chill, uh, you know, their mm. board. Mm. Anyway, I wanted to also talk about uh, I just, all these bones I'm picking with you. A bone to pick bring from it on. listening to the podcast. Bring it on. I'll bring, uh, I'll bring the fire right back at you. Yeah, you are constantly bringing up that you have dual citizenship. Con- to, okay. 
to uh, I feel like you're rubbing it in our faces sometimes that you're a dual citizen. Rubbing it in your face. Two. Yeah. Every time you mention it, that's what you're doing. I want you to know that. Okay. Well, uh, maybe let's interrogate what you're bringing to that. Uh, Why do you feel pure like- Pure-blooded patriotism, my friend. All right? Great. America, number Great. one. All but- right? And this is what I want to get at. All right? There are two wolves inside you. No, two animals. One's a bald <laughs> eagle. There's- and the other one's a moose. A bull moose. All right. Yeah. All right. And you need mm-hmm. to pick what the one, which one wins the one you feed, bud. All right. Okay. They're fighting inside of you. <laughs> which one are you going to feed? Are you asking me? Yeah. Right now? Yeah. As a patriot of I think America. I have a beautiful hybrid eagle moose inside of me. You know, that a moose. moose with a, a ginormous set of wings and antlers. So you have a mythical creature. Both. You have a made up. A moose eagle. He's got um, a psychological problem, everybody. You hear that. He's <laughs> <laughs> seen seeing things in his mind. I so mean, you have two I animals here, fighting. I, this, you know the old, that old uh, saying that you have, every person has two wolves inside of them? I don't know that saying. You haven't heard that? It's Never. Like a, <laughs> Tell me about this. What is this? Two wolves inside of you? Meme? What? Um, Is this like a, like some kind of, it's like one of those like ancient, uh, wisdom things. Okay. Yeah. I'm curious about this. Two wolves. Here, let's see if I could read this here for you. There's two. Is this like connected to the t-shirt with like the three wolves in the moon? You know that? One evening, an old Cherokee told his grandson about a a battle that goes on inside people. (laughs) Oh, because it's a ancient uh, Indian story here. I just it's sending up a red flag. That's all I'll say. It could. All right, Mister. I mean, if anybody's got to be sensitive about uh, indigenous peoples, it's the guy who's half Canadian and American. Okay, read the you rest got of your poem. the amount of guilt. Huh? Give me, give me the poem. I certainly do. <laughs> My son, the battle is between two wolves inside us all. One is evil. It is anger, envy, jealousy, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, uh, self-pity, guilt, resentment, inferiority, lies, false pride, superiority, and ego. That's that's the America side. I was going to say. Let's get to the Canada part. The other is good. It is joy, peace, love, (laughs) hope, sincerity, humanity, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion, and faith. The grandson thought about it for a minute and then asked his grandfather which one wins the old cherokee simply replied the one you feed wow that's really deep wow and even i mean wow you said it all right there bud wow you said Uh, it all right there eh when you were like hey america's the evil wolf no but i was i I was being flipped because the thing about canada is people i mean people in america it's not as good as everyone thinks it is that's the thing about canada it's basically the same they got a lot of the same problems they got their own versions of them you know canada is not this like utopia where racism doesn't exist it's not like thank you socialized medicine is like i mean it's an old cherokee it's a cure-all eventually but, you know, people think about socialized medicine. That's one of the things you talk about. We say, oh, Canada so great. But, I, you know, I have family members who waited for years to get treatment for their illnesses. You know, is that, is that better than a system in which the, you can only get treatment if you have the money for, like what we have here? I don't know if it's better or worse. It's just different. It's its own thing. Yeah. So which wolf are you going to feed? Which wolf am I going to feed? I live here. I like my life here. Do I sometimes daydream about moving to Vancouver? Absolutely. Beautiful city. I have been daydreaming about moving to uh, the Azores since I visited. So yeah. it's just, you know, I mean, everyone gets that during vacation. I mean, we could, t- I'm sure when you go to Alamosa, you're like, I should move here. Mm, I don't know. Not Alamosa. <laughs> they got that grill and chill, which I like, but not, not Alamosa. You get that in Loveland, so. Well, maybe I should move to Loveland. Wow. The Azores, do they have Dairy Queens? Not that I saw. Not that there's a Burger King. You'd, you'd miss it. Burger King's good though. Yeah, Burger good. King's. You, you're gonna want. You that said Burger that as King. if Dairy Queen isn't good. I thought you loved the grill. No, Dairy Queen's good. I mean, I, it's good for the Azores that they have Burger what King. What fries do you like better? Um, Burger King versus Dairy Queen. Yeah, it's been a long time. It's been a long time since I had a Burger King fry. I don't know what their fries are even like now. Jeez, oh, I don't go to BK. They're good. They're good. 
BK broiler. I like um, them. If I'm getting a fast food fry, I'm getting good times. Like Wild Korea. fries, baby. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be doing a uh, fry bracket here soon. Hell yes. I think. Uh, so, yeah, I'm constantly trying to. I've just been thinking about fries. Tell me where, where you at. I mean, I do think it's probably for me, it's a toss up between Arby's and good times. Arby's has good fries. Arby's has great fries. Curly's. Curly fries. The curly right? fries. Yeah, that's it's a nice. novelty and it tastes good. It's really good. When they're good. Sometimes a curly fry, when like you get them and they're like not quite cooked all the way. Do you like the soggy ones? Disgusting. The ones that are really, really curly, but like a little soggy? Or do you like the crispy ones? Crispy ones. Crispy yeah, my ones, wife for likes sure. the, the soggier ones sometimes. And I like the. I felt like we too. just like mush. You know what I thought was interesting when the CityCast was talking about having uh, all the uh, migrants that are here mm -hmm. and that they didn't know what mashed potatoes were <laughs> and they don't like the food at the, yes. uh, what, what are they called? The places they're staying? The shelters. The shelters, yeah. yeah. They don't like the food because they say it's too spicy, which I thought was Sometimes, very interesting. Sometimes, yeah. It was interesting. It's, like, it's just like they're not used to pepper. In some cases, yeah. Yeah, because it's not like they're loading up. It's not hot ones over there. No, not, I don't think so. Yeah, it's more like their their palate isn't used to that, mm -hmm. and they don't know what mashed potatoes are. So that it would be weird coming over and just seeing like a pile of mush. Yeah, I mean, well, think about like what if you but were. But it's good, right? Is are we like brainwashed it's... as Americans? We love potatoes. I mean, brainwashed or just like different culture. You right. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Like if you went to China and you went, you you had to rely on government supported food, you know, and you got food that is common there which maybe is like yeah, you know something one. gelatinous or like something with a texture yeah, you're not familiar with yeah, yeah you'd think ooh, gross right but also that's just like regular food for them yeah it's interesting yeah but i'm like did Super they try it because mashed potatoes are good <laughs> like, that's what I was like, uh, <laughs> it's like am i wrong for liking potatoes i was talking to somebody else and i was like i think the potato might be the perfect food it might be. I love potatoes. It's hard to beat a good potato. potato. Mashed. I've just boiled, started. Fried. Mash chips. them, boil them, stick them in a stew. You get it. Mm -hmm. Taters. You just like Gollum over Precious. here. Precious. Can we talk about the hunt for Gollum? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. You're a Lord of the Rings fan. Yeah. Yeah, you dabble. Not the books, though. Hate the books. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hate Tolkien. Love Jackson. That's wow. my perspective okay. on All right. Lord of the wow. Rings. <laughs> Everybody I've gone to Myth Moot with, Mountain Moot, just turned over in their graves. Not graves. They're not dead, but they're they're freaking out. Are you are you excited for which is the which is the upcoming Lord of the Rings project you're most excited for? Your options are the animated feature Ride of the Ring Hero. I am excited about that. The second season of Rings of Power. I mean, I'm excited for all of it. Or the Hunt for Gollum two part movie event from movie. most of the original jackson boyan's walsh team include, <laughs> with director andy circus i didn't i i enjoyed the amazon show so i'm excited for that because it's the thing coming out the soonest i guess that's true yeah i am too i'm, I really, enjoyed I'm actually really excited I it was for good. it i, I thought like, the, yeah it was good as hell i liked it it was great i love that arondir the the elf the black elf yeah dude he, fucking he was good ass in he that last episode. Ass. yeah dude he's like doing cool kicks and shit and I like the the love story with him and the yeah, the woman yeah. Bronwyn. Bronwyn. <laughs> Although, did it. you see that she the actress like said she was retiring from acting and like she wasn't? Oh, I heard some like uh, which I don't know leak stuff about like they yeah. think she might be dead. Really? Yeah, they killed her off pretty quickly, mm -hmm. and that might be why because she's quitting acting, or apparently. maybe vice versa. Like if she was quitting acting, maybe she didn't like the. I mean, the reaction of that series was not universally positive. Yeah. And yeah. I can imagine being a person who was making it feeling like not good about how many people disliked it. Yeah. Something that did surprise me with this whole Bobert thing that we've been talking about is like you care a lot about what people are saying about it. 100%. As yeah. a person I, that, you know, I just figured you didn't care. You're like, I'm doing what I'm doing. And if people respond to it positively, that's great. And if they don't like it, I'm still just doing my journalistic thing. Yeah, I mean, you get you got to have a little bit of cognitive dissonance about it because like yes, I want to say the thing that I'm trying to say, but also recognize that journalism is a business. That's how this exists. Like the work that I do requires it, and it's not just me, like it's a big team. Like I, I did a lot, I had a lot of these conversations. I taped a lot of these conversations. I did this reporting. I did a lot of research, but like we needed to consult a lawyer. I needed a, an editor. Like I have, a, I am so lucky to work with a team of very talented people, like really experienced and talented people. 
That's why something like Lauren Boebert can't lose can exist because it is the, the ambition, the, like the, the, it just requires a lot to take something like yeah. that on and to execute it the way we have, which I'm so proud of. Yeah. My first thought when you get, when that first episode came out was like, wow, they put so much work into this. Yeah. It, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to tell you how many lawyers I talked to, how many, how much of a fucking pain in the ass it was, but that led to this product that is like bold and aggressive have and people strong been saying that's good firm oh yeah okay good all the right people so that listen like, are to it getting are like, like it's like they know that it's something special yeah it's good i know it's something it's special yeah yeah but there are so many people that are like lauren bobert i don't even want to approach but you're just it. focusing on the one it's like any comic who like sees the person not laughing you're gonna fo- you can be an arena of people laughing but if you see one person not laughing that's who you're gonna focus on a little bit a little bit but also it, it like i said it's a business you know it's a numbers mm-hmm. game to to support so you don't see it as all art. the people it's both it's both and that's why it's a challenge well, because well, all can of- it be bro my brother i mean i don't know ask a philosopher jd <laughs> um but the the all the talented people the experienced people you know they have they get paid for their work that's how this works. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And to pay so them. How much did you pay Bobert to be on your bond? Zero dollars. <laughs> she did it by choice. She wanted to be on it. She wanted to talk to me about January 6th, about Is this before feminism. or after you called her a Greek goddess coming down from on high? That was before. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just so stood out to me. Like that was, yeah, I was like, you wow. Like that? What a, yes. Well, think about the Greek gods. Who are they? You know? Uh, Poseidon, Zeus, yeah. Hades, Persephone, the god of the underworld. Persephone, no, yeah. yeah, Hades. You know they're not they're not like all good or all bad. You know there's this whole mm. spectrum of behavior. Sure. Zeus, Zeus transformed himself into a bull and raped human women. Also, as rain, as rain. Yeah, he as he impregnated a woman. He became rain and he impregnated a woman through. Really, yeah. I didn't know that story. Yeah, I mean they're complicated people. What I was trying to, with the point I was making with that well, comparison, they're, they're not people. You're right; they're gods. Yeah, but the point the point I was making was that she she is this character in She's this presence, larger than life drama of our national politics. And when I was in the same room with her and these other candidates who are running for this same race, it was clear to me that she stood out. Stood out is the star. She was bigger. Is it good that this is happening in politics? Like, should there be like breakout stars from politics i think it's just part of the way the media works now part of the way our the you know the internet has affected us that this this happens the, i actually was just editing this interview that's going to come out on the show at some point soon with this guy named matt by who is a longtime reporter for the new york times magazine for yahoo news who wrote this book about gary hart do you know gary hart gary the hitman hart <laughs> i think that's brett the hitman <laughs> yeah. hart yeah, exactly no, it's okay. <laughs> Gary Hart was a presidential candidate from Colorado, a two-term senator. And in 1987, he was the front runner for the Democratic nomination for president. And his nomination was destroyed after reporters dug up this story about him having an extramarital affair. He thought that was out of bounds, but they found it and then it went viral. And that was the end of his career. That's recent? 1987. Okay. And Matt so by this entry, <laughs> last century, yeah, 30, 30, 36 years ago. Um, but he, he wrote this book about this moment where Gary Hart's career basically ended. And he said, this was the turning point where the combination of satellite TV news and, um, the way like people were thinking about politics b- b- led to the celebritification of politics. And we were, we wanted our politicians to also be celebrities. We didn't want them to be statesmen like Gary Hart thought of himself. We wanted them to be something more. We wanted them to represent us in different ways. And what I wanted to talk to Matt Bai about was about how Lauren Boebert fit into that. And he was like, well, yeah, I mean, my whole thesis 10 years ago when I wrote this book was we've created this situation where politicians are celebrities. So celebrities are going to be politicians as well. It's going to go both ways. And in the past 10 years, what have we seen? We've seen Donald Barack Trump should run for president. be elected president. Right. I, w- I would have argued that the president was always kind of a celebrity. The president was always the biggest poli- pol- political celebrity. Yeah, I think in so. In America anyway. Yeah, but. I think that's a good, re- re- reasonable argument to make. But 
it was, I mean, that's, that's part of the story is how, how the media has changed and how the, 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 the economics of the media has changed. You know, it used to be everyone tuned into Walter Cronkite on the TV news and everyone read the New York times in the morning. And now we have social media, we have clickbait, we have, we have these, these business models that are based on like Podcasts sheer numbers with inflammatory names. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lauren Bober can't lose. Subscribe anywhere you get your podcast. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, I got to pee. So, uh, I do too. I appreciate you coming on. Thanks for having me back. You no, know, I always enjoy our conversations. Thanks for, uh, you know, having fun with me on here, you know, I appreciate Thanks for always asking me the real questions. Yeah. Well, you know, I think we should keep Canadians honest. So, <laughs> <laughs> Wow. You love hockey? Yeah. Enough said. Are you excited about the finals? They start tonight. No, the Avs aren't in them. No, but the Oilers, they have the chance to bring the cup home to Canada for the first time since 1993. I'd rather watch soccer. I know. You don't care at all. <laughs> That's fine. It's fine. No, I mean, it's, I mean that'd be great. Good. I, it's hope, something. I hope the boys bring it home. Let it go. go all, all power to the boys. Although the other boys, if they bring it home, that's also a thing. And then that would be great. But that's the thing about sports is one of the teams is going to win at the end of the season. Yeah. No matter what, one of the teams wins the championship. I just hope they're gracious winners. I hope so too. I yeah. hope there's no violence. Yeah. I hope they hug at the end. And or, maybe kiss. Know, just let's show some sportsmanship. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me, JD. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Is there any... Uh, local podcast you feel threatened by that uh you think could uh take your guys's best podcast of the year award soon or because weren't you voted best podcast by westward like twice mm -hmm. yeah yeah any any front runners any any young hungry podcasters in the wings you want to throw shade at not really i mean i'm always meeting new people who are starting new projects i love left hand right brain thank you thank um you. yeah but uh no citycast denver's the best in town I mean, it's hard to argue with for sure. Guess there's, uh, you know, you got a couple of years on you, but who cares? You know, whatever. I've a been, couple I'm, years on you? What do you mean? I've been my podcast has been around since oh, 2014. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have. Yeah, it's you almost the a ten year anniversary. Anniversary. So, is it? When is the anniversary? It'll be next month, I think. So. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. Congrats. Yeah. Well, thank you. You got anything planned? I'm gonna have Royce on. Royce Rosewood, okay. very first guest. That's good. Yeah, he's a good guy. I like the him. Royce episodes. Yeah, he's he's uh, my muse for sure. He's your muse? I mean, he's somebody I look up to and think, uh, you know, that guy's doing it right. Nice. He's uh, constantly, the uh, creativity thing, Uh huh. he's got it in, in heaps. He heaps does. of creativity. He really does. Yeah. Well, congratulations on 10 years. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so uh, everyone can find you on left hand, I mean, on... Uh, <laughs> CityCast Denver, anything else? They want, find it on city, denver.citycast.fm is where to find the show. You can sign up for the daily newsletter, Hey Denver. CityCast Denver, every weekday morning, we got news, culture, conversation about this city. It's the best way to connect to your city. And Lauren Bobert Can't Lose is available wherever you get your podcasts. Um, we're putting it out on the CityCast Denver feed as well. So um, you can get it there. But also, if you subscribe exclusively to the LBCL feed, you get that nice logo that we had designed with yeah, her it's on it. It's great. Yeah. That very provocative title, Big Font. <laughs> Just for All you. Right. <laughs> Enjoy that big font. All right. Well, I will say uh, be excellent to each other. You know, uh, we'll count it forever. However you want to sign this off. Oh, my God. I know you do this. And I never have anything prepared. See you next time. Okay.